Um, just to add a little bit to the introduction there. So uh, part of the, uh, the interest in some of the work that we're doing is I'm sitting on the government task force around places of worship and faith at the moment. So we're getting to input. In fact, I've just come hot footed from a meeting about uh, vaccine and testing certification. I've got to put my teeth back in. Um, and so there's some discussions about how that would relate to faith and things like that. Um, we also are engaged with this new program around community champions uh, and looking particularly about messaging and uh, capacity building. And I think for many of you, um, like me, we have concerns about different parts of society. And so to some extent, all of our work relates to the different concerns we have. And I have to confess that I am a parent of three secondary school aged children. Uh, that has been an interesting trial. And I would say that consistently I find that I bump into people that are concerned about our young people and what's happening with them. Um, so I'm sure we'll pick up on that. Of course, one thing that the pandemic has done and certainly lockdown and the restrictions have done has meant that we have come much more in touch, all of us, with issues about loneliness and social isolation and things like that. Even if we weren't before, We've certainly had some restriction now. And I think one of the things that which comes up again and again is we hear all the time about the disproportionate effect that the disease, the pandemic has had on black and minority ethnic communities. What maybe is less known is the unequal out health outcomes that those communities normally have. But the real scandal, I think, is the fact that we knew that this pandemic would have an effect on those communities and we weren't, didn't do enough to mitigate against those things. So some of these things that we'll talk about today really relate to those things. Let's just have a look at a little bit about some of the background information, some of the reports uh, that I've drawn on today. There are many, many different reports, but these are just some that um, have we've been reflecting on recently. There was a, a pre-pandemic report, but it's been published during this period, the Free Churches Group from the uh, Churches Together, and it's about church and social cohesion. It's been quite interesting looking at that. Some of those are general points. It's not just from a Christian perspective, it does look at faith. Then the All-Party Parliamentary Group, which was mentioned before, launched its own report looking at how faith and society are interacting, particularly in relation to councils and the partnerships that have happened um, over this past year. So that's uh, key to see there as well. House for Good, another report came up, particularly around the value of the buildings and what, what has been done through church buildings. And many of us would have come across the Leveling Up Our Communities report that Danny Kruger wrote, which had a particular focus on faith and a new deal for faith, which we have found has been an interesting thing for us to pick up on. And it would be wrong for me not just to note some other opportunities and different things that are happening there in terms of some of the things available. And some of you, I recognize some people on the core have been part of the focus groups uh, that we've been running for government, particularly around places of worship and how we face the pandemic and deal with the different issues coming up. So we've found over the past little while that these have been the issues or some of the issues, some of the areas of focus. Uh, I mentioned youth. I have to note a personal interest there. Obviously, some of the facts as are coming up, the, uh, whether people want a vaccine, don't want a vaccine, how they feel about vaccine, illness in communities, whether that be within faith communities, whether that be actually COVID related, not COVID related, those have been issues that have come up. Finances, how we face, how we go now out of, come out of uh, COVID and the effect on finances, effect on not only uh, institutions, but also the effect on um, individuals within our faith communities. Social distancing still remains an issue that we have to navigate and has been an issue. And these are the kind of things that come up as we gather together different uh, organisations, particularly related to the covenant and how faith interacts with local government. And then the whole issue of partnership, which we're particularly focused on today, uh, particularly within local setting, how those partnerships have expanded, how they have worked well, where there's been problems. One of the things we seem to find, and this is not only the case with faith or with the faith covenant, but it has been in other areas as well, even related to food, where there is a partnership that already existed in a local area, 
those partnerships have meant that there's been a there's been a moving ship there's been a momentum already for other things to flow around where local authorities uh, local government have not had a relationship already with civil society whether that be faith or other parts um, then it's been more of a standing start and we have particularly um, we've been involved we've drawn in to work around Essex particularly um, we just they just in some ways just come through the covenant process themselves and they drew us in and it's been fascinating to see from our national perspective on a local perspective what's happened and how Essex County Council has engaged with faith organizations and where they've seen the role of faith um, and potentially we've flagged up where it can be um, used more generally. And I think part of the question we have here, and I think this is a this was the front cover of the Spectator a number of weeks ago, really asking about what is the role of faith post the pandemic. What comes to mind more and more is that actually people are starting to understand that faith is not a series of buildings, that is not so much building more a way of life is a little phrase we've come across before. And in that sense, um, the, the COVID itself was revealing it unveiled apocalypse means to unveil i didn't realize that until recently uh, someone was sharing that with me and it, i think it has shown what's going on underneath both within our faith communities but potentially also within society as well and even that stat about health inequalities right at the start shows actually again gives more focus to what's happening um as i said uh, most of the faith groups we've engaged with and connects with have said consistently it's more than about a meeting or a building it's more about relationships and connections and what we've found is local authorities have realized that there is a great value in the what i would call the faith capital the connection with uh, parts of their uh, constituents and that's one of the reasons why we find there's an interest to the faith covenant itself there's been particular issues around disengagement. Some people said, well, we've got much more engaged, much more connected, much more online. Here we are gathering today. Didn't have to go out of our own homes, most of us. We are just able to click on. Um, I don't know if many of you were like me and suddenly couldn't find out the Zoom link, the mad panic that one has beforehand. Um, but we found it and we're here, which is good. But actually we notice there is a disengagement as well, that some people become engaged and then disengage, and that's part of the issue. And then one of the things which are coming to us more and more from local authorities, how do we engage with young people? And then one of the questions we've found have been asked is that can we, should we? We can do a bunch of things online. Should we do those things online? We can connect in these ways. Should we connect in those ways? So those are some of the questions. One of the things we've found is that we've seen a great burst of volunteering happen initially within, um, within local communities. But the, um, but the stats I saw up until the summer, the, uh, the NHS... Um, volunteer responders largely the large tracks of them weren't utilized that may have changed over the last period of time I've not got up to date but we do see that a lot of activity happened from places of worship lots of activity happened on the basis of local authority so that coming together of more localized volunteering was something which was powerful so I just see I've got my time clock there so I know Jonathan's watching me for time um, but I'm coming to a close Jonathan it's all right so when we come to build back better um, part of what I said before that moving ship is easier to steer you can do much more with it when you have a relationship and certainly the 13 local authorities were connected with majority feedback to us that it has been beneficial to have a faith covenant been beneficial to have a relationship already we would say the mood music has changed uh, because of the practical response that people have seen. But also when I say practical response, that's not just about provision of food or delivery or visits, but also the fact that people have needed faith at this time. And we've had some restrictions. There's been a more nuanced approach that government has to lockdown three to what they had in lockdown one. And so we've seen that happen. And we're seeing now the question, not so much about should we engage with faith, but why shouldn't we? And there's new partnerships coming about potentially with the army or with housing. But it's also a time for a bit of a new flavour 
from faith as well. And finally, it would be remiss of me not to give these little guidance lines, our, our four Ds there about gathering together, whether it be in a place of worship, whether it be for worship, density, duration, dis, uh, direction, distance and ventilation. If you want to make it five, you could take out ventilation and quit drafts. These are the key factors we're asking people to always consider when they come together. Thank you, Jonathan, back to you.